Hey guys, Carl here. Today we're going to be talking about the Sony 7200 G Master in one of my favorite places, the wildlife refuge down here at the Butte Creek, close to my home. And I thought, what a better place to come out to and really put this lens through its paces and just kind of see what it can do out here in this environment. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a little sweaty at my back. Been hiking for about an hour. Been seeing some pretty cool wildlife out here. So we're gonna kind of talk about the positives and the negatives of this lens and where it really shines. And if it potentially could be something that you might wanna grab in the future. So without further ado, let's jump into it. First and foremost, you know, what sets this apart from its predecessors? Uh, I, I've had the 7200 F4 uh, G OSS lens. I've also had the first version of this in the 7200 G Master lens V1. Both of those are amazing lenses and you really can't go wrong with either of them. The 7200 F4 is so lightweight. It's about this size, actually. I'll get into that here in a minute. It's a great lens if you're just looking for something inexpensive to jump into this focal range. I highly recommend it. And now that this is out, you can get the 7200 version one pretty inexpensive. Let's talk about the differences between this lens and the 7200 B1. So right off the bat, you're lighter and smaller. You know, without the hood, you're you know, pretty small. You also have the aperture ring, which for me is a huge positive. I love this thing. I use it all the time. Um, I am not a big fan of switching my aperture on my cameras as it looks kind of just clunky and you get that those click looks to it. So I like to be able to just fluidly and smoothly um, be able to adjust that. It's a huge positive for me. You also have uh, an added mode. So you still only have mode one and mode two, which mode one is for uh, handheld stabilization, stabilization, sorry. Mode two is for your um, tripod stabilization. And then mode three, mode three, that's a special mode. It's like turning up to 11 in Spinal Tap. I don't even know what it does. No, it's just an added stabilization. It, it gives you more stabilization, supposedly, than the other two modes. Uh, why would you not always just keep it in three? I don't know. I can't really tell a difference between uh, mode two and mode three, to be honest with you. Mode one and mode two, you can tell a big difference between them, handheld and tripod mode. Uh, mode three, I, I've had um, trying to figure that out myself. And you also have your click on and off. So if I want my, I have my microphone on my chest so you can hear that probably. So that's the click on and then click off, smooth. As far as uh, close focus distance goes, it's not the greatest close focus distance. You're uh, looking at 1.32 feet or 0.4 meters at the low end at 70 millimeters and then 0.82 meters or 2.69 feet at a full 200 meters. So it's, it's better. Uh, it's nowhere near what the new F4 version of this lens can do with its macro capabilities. You're definitely not going to be a macro lens with this unless you get some sort of a tube set or an adapter or something like that but that that is something that you could definitely do though so uh, check that out it has this really nice hood so you're looking at a felt inside hood with a rubber bumper on the outside of it and you have this nice little gate here so you could adjust your very um your nd filter or your uh circular polarizer if you need to and uh, it closes right up which is pretty nice and then you have it's got a locking button on it so you line up the two dots, click into place, and then you've got yourself a locker that lets it unlock and lock. As far as weight goes, it's a very light lens overall. 
This definitely feels as light as my 24 to 105 um, without this and the foot on there for sure. As far as weight and size go, you can't beat this this lens for what it is, what you get out of it to the weight and, this, and the size of it. It is one of the shortest 7200s that doesn't telescope out. So this is what, this is the length you get. So you're not getting any longer than this unless you're gonna run the lens hood. So it's a pretty short telephoto lens when it comes to it. And you have some great focal lengths in between 100 and 135. Uh, I use this lens a lot when it comes to two camera interview setups or two camera setups in general. We'll run this around 100 to 135. Um, for that nice tight shot, you know, from the side angle. And then if I'm doing wildlife or something, I'm usually all the way at 200. And then I also have my clear image zoom on or I'm running a you know, teleconverter or something on there to try to get as much out of this lens as I possibly can. As far as negatives of this lens go, I can't really think of anything too negative about it. So on the Vera version one, there was a lot of back focusing and it was really hard to grab focus on something if there was other things going on around it uh, and it wouldn't really pinpoint onto something easily. It was a, a big nuisance, it was very annoying. Um, and this has a little hint of that, but it's nowhere near what the version one was. Is it worth the extra thousand dollars? I don't know about that. Uh, I will say that you won't be sorry if you purchase this lens as it looks beautiful um, it renders a, an amazing image, very sharp, corner to corner, all the way down to f2.8. I had the 100 to 400, which I loved, but I really wanted that f2.8 if I'm doing weddings or any kind of videography. Uh, the f2.8 makes a big difference for me, specifically. Even though these cameras are so good at 12,800 and stuff, it still made me want to have that, that f2.8. That 100 to 400 is an amazing lens. I would love to have it again, but if it's between that and this, I think I'll go buy a teleconverter and I'll be probably, you know, way more money spent overall than the 100 to 400, but I will definitely have uh, those focal ranges within this at that point. So it just depends on, on what you're doing and, and your budget. If you guys have any questions about this lens, make sure to leave a comment down below. Uh, I'll leave a bunch of specs up. I'm gonna go grab some more footage. It's starting to rain out here, so, uh, kind of shield up the cameras a little bit and we'll go grab um, you know some more footage i've got some drone footage i want to grab and uh see if there's any more wildlife out here if i haven't scared it all away with talking like this so yeah anyway uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this i'm out of the studio doing something outside for once which is you know a little bit different than usual so kind of cool so yeah thanks guys so much for watching make sure to hit a thumbs up if you like this subscribe if you haven't and we'll see you guys in the next one cheers Thank you.